What is the wish train? What is so special about this? You know, like, I just love it. I came here just for this. Hello, my name is Laura Lessig. I um, did a work called Drained, and today I performed Drained Floor, which was at uh, Piazza di San Marco in Venice. I explored the relationship between subject and object, so I shifted the focus from um, the actual palace to a drain in front of the palace. Paris. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's it. Titled by uh, performance Venice Unfulfilled, and the idea was that I was looking at tourism through the lens of photography, and especially a very typical touristic photograph, which is highly taken in, in these uh, in these sort of very touristic spots that we see all the time, like you see people queuing up to go to a certain bridge or to a certain point and get that shot. And so this sort of behavior was very kind of interesting to me in the very first moment because it sort of creates this idea that the moment or the experience is actually the picture, not you actually physically being there. So uh, the construction of this moment um, and how the subject reacted with the object of the background was an interesting relationship that I wanted to disrupt or sort of intervene in through performance. And so my idea in the end was quite simple. I would sort of approach people in these very touristic spots. So in Venice particularly, I was taking a lot of photos in the, uh, the academia bridge, but also the... But sometimes it's not even that far away. Yeah. It's just that people aren't used to walk. And so when they when they read like 20 minutes, oh my god, I cannot do it. And I'm just like, uh, I do that. <laughs> if I want to go anywhere, yeah. yes. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing. And you got ex exactly this uh, extraction of gestures, yeah, what you were thinking about in the beginning. Of Shams. So I was, my project was looking at tourism through the lens of photography, especially the kind of photography that uh, we see in very highly touristic spots where there is a certain relationship between the subject and the object. And my intervention or my performance was to somehow disrupt this relationship and offer a service where people could um, uh, make uh, almost like false memories of places that they couldn't visit and I would Photoshop their postures into these alternate locations. About it. Yeah, thank you so much.
I'm Valentin, this is... I am Rahman. And our performance is a joint venture of the Research Center for Art Shows and Conscious Tourism. And we both envisioned a performance that would critique uh, the hustle and uh, the uh, struggle to cover art shows in a limited amount of time and more generally covering all the sites of a certain place and not really getting to experience the place in itself, the place in itself which is static, which is not dynamic. And our approach was whether to examine whether a static place can only be really truly ever experienced through static behavior. Uh, in the conscious tourism, I found that uh, uh, to relation uh, to conscious tourism in a, uh, in a responsible tourism, uh, tourists uh, need to explore the unique variety and uh, lots of uh, heritage uh, which is already exist in Venice. And uh, we are getting and we are uh, trying uh, to uh, highlight ourselves as a uh, as a diversified field of tourism, and uh, uh, people can explore the diversity, and uh, they can uh, uphold the sustainability of uh, Venice and uh, tourism, which is uh, more relevant. Buongiorno. Hello and welcome to an alternative guide to being a responsible tourist in Venice. Thank you for listening to this audio walk. Together we will discover this magical city. So let's get started. Firstly, I'd like you to find a spot from which you can observe your surroundings. Please make sure you're not standing in anyone's way. As you will have already noticed, the city is crowded. An incredible 30 million tourists visit these 8 square kilometers a year. Have you found a suitable spot yet? Pause the guide until you have settled well. Now, take a moment to look around. What do you see? Look, there's a lion. And there's another one over there. Look up and enjoy the 
pink flowers on the window sill. They go well with the washing hanging on the line. That's a bright yellow T-shirt. What else do you see? Turn around and observe. Water. Or do you see a bridge? That's not surprising, as Venice has four hundred and fifty-three bridges. Until eighteen fifty-four, the Rialto Bridge was the only bridge crossing the Canal Grande, the city's main waterway. It was constructed using over twelve. Thousand logs. Now, take a deep breath. What do you smell? The sea, rubbish, soap. Let the smells linger. Ooh, that smells of coffee. Venice was the first European city to establish a coffee culture, importing it from Egypt in the 18th century. You might have heard of the famous Café Florian on Market Square. It was established in 1720 and has become an institution. Inhale. And exhale again. Uh, and I wanted to go exactly against that by consciously speaking very slowly, which forces you to kind of calm down. And then it also, because you're calm, like I feel like you can take in information. And um, yeah, it wasn't supposed to be a lecture, but it's supposed to like open your eyes to the fact that the city faces many problems if you're not a responsible tourist. And I, so how I worked on it was that I, first when we arrived, like observing all the time what's going on um, and just taking in what, what repeats itself. So for example, you can always find a lion. There's a lion there, there's a lion there, there's a lion on the flag. If you're not in a temple, you can usually find washing hanging somewhere. Um, yeah, behind the bridge. Uh, always pigeons, um, there's usually flowers somewhere, so something that repeats itself. And that's why just now I said we could have also done it at the other company, because it doesn't actually matter where you are in Venice, you can always do it. There's always water somewhere, you'll always be close to a bridge, you'll always be close to an alley, um, so you can do it wherever, as long as you take the time to just um, be in the moment. Yeah, that moment, and also, um, yeah, I think that, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Um, some of the things really worked out well, for instance, um, the flowers and the lines are standing over there, and it all fell into place, and it almost felt like it was scripted or something, so it really worked well on me, and I enjoyed it. Um, amazing like the voice was so like such a easy welcome into the world and like to me it felt like like in in the best way possible like such a crazy betrayal moment because like you ease yourself in and then you get familiarized with very common properties but then all of a sudden the plot twists like things aren't where they are anymore and like you start to sort of get a broader perspective like you start very local but then it's like we have bigger problems bigger fish to fry and so like uh, that was very interesting to me that sort of switch and like yeah that was awesome yeah, that was, yeah. yeah but that's the great thing that we that we start to look for these things and you really see how suddenly we are in and how easy it is to influence us because we want things to match we want things to be like they are described we talked about things that the majority of tourists don't know, or at least in my experience. Um, so for example, people never heard of Aqua Alta even in Italy, or even the typical uh, things to eat and drink. And also, 
um, the fact of enjoying Venice but respecting her, respecting the city, which is something uh, which even the authorities are stressing. So you touched uh, a lot of points, and I'm very happy to have you. What's your name? Irvin. My name is Irvin. Thank you. Okay. And what did you do? I uh, curated an exhibition about uh, the story of the courtesans in the 16th century in Venice, and I brought them to 2022. Ich bin in Venedig bei der Recherche doch auf Sachen gestoßen. Erst auf eine historische Organisation hier in Venedig. Es hat sich in der Vergangenheit jemand auseinandergesetzt mit der Geschichte der Courtesanen und Diese wurden in einem Katalog festgehalten, das ist die offizielle PDF. Das ist quasi für mich ein touristisches Relikt. Dieser Katalog wurde von einem, ich schätze, Mann erstellt, das wird nirgendwo gesagt, ähm, der sich die Mühe für seine geliebteste Kurtisane gemacht hat, ähm, die wichtigsten festzuhalten, sodass, wenn Leute nach Venedig kommen, konnten sie mit diesem Katalog Kurtisanen finden, von denen man sagt, dort würde man bestimmte Dienste Äh, erhalten, äh, sie werden berühmt und sie, es ist eine Art äh, City Map in Informationen, weil früher Karten natürlich nicht das gängige Mittel waren. Die Inspiration ist die, äh, dieser Katalog und für mich hat sich einfach die Frage gestellt, äh, wo ist die Geschichte dieser Frauen, sind diese Orte alle markiert oder nicht und dann bin ich auf die Ponte delle Tette gestoßen, also die Brücke der Brüste. Ähm, als eigentlich einziges touristisches Merkmal, um der Geschichte der Kurtisanen Ehre zu zeigen. Und es war mir ein bisschen zu wenig. Also habe ich die Orte aufgesucht, die in diesem Katalog aus 205 Kurtisanen oder 200, ja, 205 Kurtisanen verzeichnet sind und habe mir sechs ausgesucht, die eine Vielfalt von ähm, Stimmungen, aber auch äh, als Stadtraum eine Vielfalt von Orten repräsentieren. Es gibt Wasser, es gibt einfach mal eine Wand, die Dunkelheit und den Tag und die Fotoserie ist unterteilt in Tag und Nacht und äh, zeigt einen, ich würde sagen, einen Tag im Besuch der Kurtisanen aus dem 16. Jahrhundert. Die ist zurückgekommen nach 20, oder vorgekommen nach 2022 und besucht die Orte repräsentativ für alle 205 Kurtisanen, die ihr äh, bekannt waren durch Arbeit oder Aufenthalt. Ein Artefakt ist meins, das ist dieser lila Regenmantel, den ich sehr, sehr mag. Und ich habe eine Freundin, die in Drag und Ballroom unterwegs ist, kulturell, und ich habe sie angerufen und meinte, ich muss deinen Kleiderschrank plündern. Und, ach so, das Tuch ist meiner Mutter, also ich habe wirklich, das war mir um, it's amazing. This exhibition in the Soto Portico. In the, I've lived here 10 years and no one's ever put anything in here. And literally, these buildings were brothels. And with the, the Ponte de la Tete here. So all day the tourists come and hear these stupid stories about the courtesans without knowing anything. And they make jokes and everyone's telling a different, the guides all tell a different story. But these are amazing to have the houses where they were and who the girls were, who you paid, how much they cost. It's really fantastic. And this wall where the exhibition is used to be a public toilet with running water. You can see the water stains here. So the water would roll down and this is where the men would relieve themselves after drinking and partying and seeing the prostitutes upstairs. So it's it's super, it's super, it's a super exhibition, a great um, installation. Vielen Dank für die Aufmerksamkeit.